Tony, I'm so sorry. You you asked a question about an hour ago. Yeah, I just actually I just wanted to. I was wondering when was the moment because it is such a personal story that you told. I mean, when was the moment that you said I have to share this? Um, the moment came after I was approached about writing the book. Like I, I it wasn't my idea yeah. to write a book. I wasn't thinking of writing a book, but an acquaintance of mine was an editor. Uh, um, uh, at Simon and Schuster, reached out to me and had sort of been following my journey, uh, Kit's journey and my journey on Facebook. Because I sort of been detailing uh, to our sort of the close circle of friends what Kit had been going through and his diagnosis, and sort of taking them, sort of uh, letting them in a little bit on on, on what was happening. And uh, after Kit died. Uh, Rakesh, who is the uh, uh, editor at Simon & Schuster, reached out to me several months after and uh, asked if he thought I might be interested in writing a book about it. And, you know, my first reaction was, no, <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't say this, but I thought this. It was like, you know, the thought of um, going back and revisiting his his death in in specific painstaking detail seems like a nightmare to me. Uh, at the same time, you know, the opportunity to um, introduce Kit to, uh, you know, thousands um, of new people, um, potentially millions, um, you know, uh, was an opportunity I couldn't, I couldn't pass up. You know, this was, he just was so special, and and what he went through was so difficult. And I felt like there were there was a story there, like deep in my heart. I felt like there, I would I would be doing an in, I'd be doing myself an injustice if I didn't um, do the difficult thing and just sort of plow ahead and tell this story. So um, you know, I, I I thought about it for a couple of weeks and um, got back to them and said, yeah, I think uh, you know, God help me, I think. Uh, I want to write this story. Well, it's a it's a poignant story from beginning to end. Of course, I mean, I knew the ending before I started it, but I, I felt like I was every page you read. I, I guess you know, oddly, I kept hoping something different uh, would happen by the time you got to the end of the book. But of course, we know that he ultimately did pass yeah. from, from cancer, uh, and. I mean, I, I have to be honest, what I, guess I, think I was most surprised about in reading the book is how honest you are. Uh, I mean, this was a warts and tale. I mean, you didn't turn around and change Kit into maybe somebody he wasn't. Um, you, you portrayed him, I imagine, exactly like he was. You know, there was a lot of humanity there. There was the, the, the fun side to him, the humorous, the kind, uh, the part you fell in love with. And then you put the negative parts of being with him and, and uh, the parts of his character that maybe weren't so flattering. Mm -hmm. um, how did you make that decision? Because I think most people writing a book especially after somebody passes, would have been tempted to truly make a hero out of them and not and not bring that humanity to the person, you know, just kind of put them up on that pedestal. But you didn't do that. Well, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing this story justice. I wouldn't be doing him justice if I sugarcoated him and and uh, you know, softened all of his edges, you know, all his his um uh, the good and bad things are about him are what made him kit. Uh, and also, I didn't sort of airbrush myself either. You know, I, I don't necessarily come off um, as a, a I, I definitely don't come off as sort of a flawless person because um, I'm not. We were both flawed people. Our relationship was flawed, but there was so much love there. Um, and uh, that you know that it's really basically as cheesy as it sounds it's like a, it's a love conquers all kind of story you know and we were opposites and there was just you know i i i know as someone who watches uh television a lot and and um and the movies that i love and the books that i i remember are the ones that tell the story of flawed characters people who aren't perfect yeah. none of us are uh and uh, you know i you know, I, I felt like I would be diminishing 
kit and and the story itself if i were to sort of just go in and share everything would he have liked it he liked the book oh that's tough i don't i don't like to speak for for him um i i i think he he would you know i i i i think ultimately um you know he might take issue with you know, maybe I got a you know a couple little things wrong about his career or his tastes. You know, he might he might take issue with some of those things, um, but for the for uh, the most part, you know, I I hope I think he I think he would like it. I think he would be amused by it. I think he would be moved by it. Um, and uh, but but again, you know, who, you know, I I don't know. And that's one of the that's one of the scary things. He's not here. He wasn't here for me to consult or to bounce ideas off of. And there were certainly periods, there still are, where I struggle with, did I reveal too much? Um, did I uh, did I do right by him, you know? And, uh, and ultimately, you know, I think the response to the book is what sort of gives me some sense of peace when people like yourself reach out to me and, and who have been through similar struggles. Uh, either with sure. cancer or in uh, uh, LGBTQ relationship and say that they felt seen reading the book. And um, also it's wonderful when I hear people say how much they loved Kit who had never met him before. Wow. Um, that also is really heartening to me and makes me feel like I, I did it. Well, Michael, I've never met you before, but um, you know, you have such a heartfelt loving mannerism about you. Um, I I would think that the reaction to the book um, is very positive in heaven. So uh, when we come back, Tony, um, it's amazing that Miss You Graham of New York is one of our sponsors today. Um, but uh, we'll be back in one second. And when we come back, Tony uh, is going to pick it up with a brand new question for you. Hi, we're back with Michael Ocielo. Uh Michael, I, I've read that the book was optioned by Jim Parsons from the Big Bang Theory. Yep. Is it true? Yes. So what was that like getting that phone call? Uh, well, it was actually, I found out in person um, because Jim, uh, when I was doing my book tour uh, three years ago, I had asked Jim because we had crossed paths many times because uh, I covered the Big Bang Theory. A lot. So I've interviewed him and we always had a really friendly rapport. Uh, and when, when I was looking for moderators for the various Q and A's I was doing at, at, uh, around the country, um, I asked him if he would moderate the one in LA. And he, uh, he said, yes, I believe before even reading the book. Uh, and then he read, you know, read the book. And when we were at the Barnes and Noble at the Grove backstage, before going out, him and his husband, Todd, who uh, runs the production company, um, That's Wonderful Productions, um, alluded to the fact that they had had a conversation about potentially optioning the book. So uh, it was kind of incredible before we walked out on stage to sort of, to hear that. Um, it was, it was mind blowing and also incredibly exciting, slightly terrifying. Um, and then, you know, a couple months later, the, the deal was done and it happened. And um, I, I couldn't be happier to be in business with him. Is he going to be actually playing you in yes. the film? You know? Yeah, so wow. he's, he's playing me. Um, and the movie has since been um, picked up uh, at Focus Features. So there's a studio and, um, you know, we're, we're deep into development. And hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, we'll be shooting it um, uh, hopefully sometime later this year. Oh, that's exciting. Wow. Amazing. That Thinking that Jim Parsons is going to be playing you. <laughs> I know. I just, it's so strange. It's sometimes I catch myself and I'm and, and that, and it hits me like sort of like the way it just hit you when you, you said it. And it's, it's very surreal, uh, in those moments. but, um, uh, I think I'm, I, Part of it doesn't still quite feel real, and it might not feel real until I'm sitting in a movie theater, and you know, God willing, everything go, goes according to plan. How we get to make this movie, um, sitting in a movie theater and just um, watching him play me, then it will probably. Hit me. 
Imagine telling that 15 year old you who for the days of our lives fan club that someday <laughs> <laughs> not only yeah. the best selling book, but you know, a very, very uh, famous actor was going to be playing you. I know. And, and it's incredible. You know, I grew up in a small town in Rosa Park. I, you know, I, I talk a little bit in the book about how I was, you know, an overweight kid, obviously a closeted kid. And, um, uh, it, it feels that it's been quite a journey from that, that, uh, what I call fat Mike, which is how I refer to him lovingly, um, to, uh, where I am now. Um, and, but it's also bittersweet because, you know, the book, the movie, all of it came from a tragedy. And, wow. um, and I, so all of it is tinged with a, a bit of sadness. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, that, that's something that I struggle with too, you know. Um, but that's real. Uh, I mean, there's so, uh, it was so real, the moments that you captured along the way. Uh, I thought both from Kit's experience uh, with going through everything and also from his, the spouse's perspective, from the family member's perspective of watching it and you perceived everything very differently, right? Mm -hmm. The person, you know, going through those stages of, of maybe, you know, anger and denial and, uh, you know, hoping and you know and hope and then or kind of resigned himself and i hate to say saying goodbye but starting to yeah. know that uh the the end was near and i think there's that one experience and then there's the family members experience uh which is very different and yeah. i thought you you really captured both sometimes you read a book and there's you know there's one chapter that's about somebody and the next chapter is about somebody else and uh you know but that's all fiction. Uh, like you literally captured both points of view so eloquently. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I thought it, it's, it just, it, it spoke to me. Uh, because some of those moments, even with how he felt in those moments, I, I really felt connected. Uh, yeah. Which why I reached out and I said, you know, thank you. I mean, this, your, your book actually made a difference. It, it mattered. I was like, I finished at like three o'clock in the morning and I'm like, and I know, <laughs> my cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, that, that, it means a lot. Um, it means a lot to hear that. So thank it you. It was a very tough time for Tony. Uh, she's a very, very powerful and successful attorney known across the tri-state region. I was sending her baskets of fruit. Uh, Michael, Kiwis, all types of stuff. Um, yeah, it was a very, very difficult time for anybody. How are you doing, Tony? With uh, are you I'm in remission. I, I feel so blessed. You know, I ch used it uh, as an experience to change my life. Uh, mm -hmm. To try to cut down on stress, I changed how I eat and how I live. Um, I'm on like a whole, uh, you know, whole food plant-based diet and I exercise and I have stress techniques that I incorporate into my life. So I, I really tried to use it to change uh, everything about myself because I was leading uh, 80 hour work week, uh, overly stressed lifestyle and I didn't care how I ate and it really does matter. Mm. Well, I'm glad to hear you're doing well. Thank you. Uh, you're a vegetarian, right? Or I'm a pescatarian. So I eat seafood. I eat seafood. Yeah. Um, I but yeah, I'm, I'm for no chicken, no meat, no right. pork. Right. Favorite fish right now, or favorite fish this month? Um, I I've always been partial to swordfish, but okay. the high mercury count in it has sort yeah. of put me off of it late. You know. Um, yeah. I, there's such an awareness to it, and I think maybe I was in denial about it for a while. Um, I also like shrimp. I'm a big shrimp fan. Yes, yes. Yeah, we took our daughter uh, all the way over to the coast, and I was so proud of her, Michael. Um, we brought her into, you know, we were watching the boats because we, we rented a place for like two weeks on the beach, and, and one night they come out there, and they, they stayed all night long, and you could see their lights were on and stuff, and then they went away like two days later. So we took her down to the local fish market um, off the North Carolina coast, and we were showing her all the kinds of fish and trigger fish. And, and of course it was, they had a little bit of this because when you bring in the net, it's, oh, we got five trigger fish in there. 
and you know different fish and but i did make her go into the shrimp basket and i was really adamant of the fact i wanted her at, at of course nine years old at the time but to go in there and get the shrimp with the heads and and the tentacles and everything we went back home and we made her clean them and everything to see you know the real truth of nature and mm -hmm. and she wasn't a baby about it at all uh, another shrimp lover she was not a little priss so mm -hmm. um i just was super proud of her for doing that yeah so as you you mentioned michael that you grew up in new jersey roselle park new jersey yeah. uh, and if i read somewhere and i don't know if it's accurate or not but that you're developing a show about your experience is that accurate? Uh, yes uh, i i um uh, someone, uh, Ben Stevenson is an executive at Bear Robot, which is J.J. Abrams' production company, who had read my book and uh, loved the book and called me in for a meeting. And we were discussing, uh, just talking about my, uh, my life. And he uh, was particularly interested in my childhood, um, which I touch on in the uh, book, about being a soap opera fanatic growing up. And, you know, one thing led to another. and. Uh, we decided to try to turn it into a television show um, about uh, about a kid um, in a small town, New Jersey, who uh, sort of fantasizes about um, an alternate universe, a soap opera alternate universe. Because when I was a kid, I used to write my own soap opera. In addition to watching one, I wrote my own. Uh, and I still have all 300 some odd scripts uh, in my uh, my 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 late mother's uh, um, storage trunk here, uh, and I saved all of that. And, um, uh, and so we're just sort sort of figuring out how how can we make that a TV show? Uh, and that's not something I've ever seen before. I've never saw I've never seen sort of the Wonder Years sort of told from a gay perspective, and yeah. also with this uh, added soap opera fantasy element. I love that. You know, we have that we were we can bond over this. When I was young, I used to have my Barbie dolls and I literally used to write a soap opera for them. So they would have their real lives and then I would, you know, drive them over to the studio and they would act out the soap operas that I created and then drive home to their regular lives. So we're That's kind of amazing. <laughs> well, what's interesting is it's such a relatable thing for kids growing up pre-internet and pre-gaming right. when we had to create our own entertainment um and also for 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 uh i find in the lgbtq community that there were not a lot of options for us or the options that were presented to us in terms of entertainment we didn't like um like i wanted to play with barbies uh that i i wanted desperately to play with barbies i would sneak across the street to my uh friend Linda Sweeto's house and play with them and then rush home. And I obviously wouldn't tell my dad, but um, I had to make compromises and sacrifices and find my own entertainment uh, and amusement. And one of those things was telling the story, which was called Beverly Hills. But I find in talking to a lot of my gay friends um, that uh, they also did the same thing. They all had this sort of this storytelling vibe. And part of it, I think, is because you want to escape. You want to escape from your environment, your current situation, um, and uh, and what better way to do it than in a world that you create uh, your, uh, yourself. Mm -hmm. You have the heart of a writer, that's for sure. Um, I'm curious, I uh, will be following to see this new show come out, I'm excited. Well, it's just in development, so I wanna be very clear. It's like, it's, you know, the thing is, and as someone who's covered television, for as long as I have, I know how hard it, difficult it is to get a television show made. Like there are a million ideas, things are being developed, you know, pilot scripts are being written, pilots are being picked up, but to actually get to a series is, you know, the odds are stacked against you. But I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, I believe in the idea. Um, the, the team at Bad Robot is incredible. Um, but uh, that said, we're, we're, we're a pretty far away from actually sh starting to shoot uh, Michelle. Well, you're busy anyway, uh, with the yeah. coming up and with all that you do, the TV line. Yes. I, I know we're out of time, but I, there was so many other things I really wanted to get to. Uh, I'm hoping that you, you'll say yes to come back again. I would love to. I oh my gosh, and update us. 
on what you're doing. Yeah. And there's, there's so many other things I really wanted to get to, but I know t there are time constraints and the like, but I, I, I have to let you go. But I was just hoping before you left, you, you, you promise you'll come back. I will definitely come back. And I also, I just want to quickly say, um, I didn't mean for John to leave. I oh, just hope. I was just hoping he would get rid it's of okay. that. He, 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 I think he was feeling more sensitive that he didn't want to hurt you any further um, within his kindness and how oh. disruptive maybe that. Uh, normally he has the picture of Elvis up. I don't know where that Reagan came back again from. I so much preferred Elvis. Down. We made him take it down. He had it like the first podcast and we were like, take take it down. Yeah. Uh, and he took it down and put Elvis up. I don't know how it got back up. But we we. <laughs> We appreciate you so much, uh, what you've gone through, uh, what you're doing every day in the LGBTQIA lifestyle. My daughter is non-binary. Uh, we have several gay gentlemen in our family. Uh, we love everybody. And we're very proud of you and your work, Michael. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. And again, before I let you go, thank you. It meant something to me. It really did. It sure did. Thank you. That means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Be good.